Hey guys, um, so today I bring you some positions uh, from round two of the Leeches 45-45 league. I've already went uh, through my team's games, but I found some interesting uh, positions from uh, the top boards and uh, I bring you I think seven, three, six, seven of them. Um, just to share with you some interesting moments that happened. Uh, so last week I brought some end games, but this week I'm bringing some uh, tactical moments and some tactical misses. Um, yeah, and yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, you, you you enjoy them, and uh, and let's go, let's go watch them. So the first one I bring is from this game, Eudaimoni versus von Slattery. Uh, 1600 players um, and a very complicated position uh, at least <clears throat> a bit messy uh, what, what, what's going on here uh, well white is uh, white is a pawn down right but white just pushed uh, this pawn here attacking this knight for uh, of, of black and you know, White is trying to regain this pawn on e3. After that, it's not clear uh, whether Black's advantage will be uh, big enough to, you know, claim that they have something. I think Black's still better, and Black's still for choice, even if, if Black loses this extra pawn. Um, and chances are some, some tactical ideas may be even uh, working here. And in actual fact, black didn't need to uh, lose the pawn back here. For example, uh, there were counter-attacking options. Uh, our knight is attacked, so let's think from the black side. The knight is attacked, what could be more natural than moving the knight and attack a pawn? Also knight e5. So both those moves would have been normal and actually good. Actually keeping keeping an edge for black because uh, the rook on e2 is undefended right so let's imagine uh, white wants to take this pawn then we would take on c4 right rook takes e3 let's put it on the board just knight takes e4 and black still a pawn up of course there's some uh, still the position is a bit messy here you have to think if you want to play with b5 or or you want to find you know to give up on c7 and 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 find some counterplay there which may be interesting because you know so okay the position is messy but definitely knight e5 was a, a natural move so so was knight e5 really with the same idea of taking on c4 but when i say this rook is undefended what i mean is if y tries to take the pawn with the knight to defend c4, well, it's not defending c4. <laughs> That's what I mean, because knight takes c4, and now actually uh, white has some problems here. This piece is under attack, it's also pinned, and problems, re real problems. Black has a big edge here. So, yeah, I've seen in this round many circumstances where uh, one player attack something and the other player instead of moving it <laughs> tries to find something more clever instead and this is the case here so again moving the knight was like the normal thing to do I would say and um, the first thing I would consider honestly but apparently black decided to to counterplay to counterattack here and black played the move uh, rookie four saying okay if you take my knight I'm gonna take your knight so yeah, it's a trade. Well, that has a couple problems. Specifically a tactical problem. Um, so if white takes the knight and black takes the knight, well, there's a pawn hanging on b7, which is a little bit annoying. It's, it's a little bit, let's just say it's a little bit annoying. Of course, after rook b8, we may take that pawn back in the end, but you know, it's ruining this structure already. So, not sure why 
Black thought that Rookie 4 was better than just moving the knight out, but okay, White, uh, Black went there. Now, for White is tough, I mean, well, maybe not tough, but White needs to do something because White has many things hanging. So, so White took the knight, which is by far the best move. Another thing that White may have considered here is, okay, if I'm if we're gonna trade knights. If I'm gonna lose the knight, let's give it away for a pawn, then I'll take your knight. This was also playable and perfectly safe for white. But actually, the fact that we can take the pawn on b7 is even stronger. So, uh, luckily for white, he found the best move, which is just to take the knight first. And now, what should have happened, but it didn't, is oh, black should take the knight back, white would take on b7, the rook would move to b8 to recapture this knight, uh, this pawn, sorry. And here many many moves are possible. You can try to defend c4, you can just start trading a lot of pawns with rook takes c3, and this will eventually be probably a draw. This is very equal already. Many trades happening, rooks. But black here, again, <laughs> decided to be clever. So... Remember when, when you have something attacked, instead of moving it, you go for something clever? Here, your opponent took a piece, so instead of taking the piece back, White said, hey, let's do the intermediate check on c4, then I'll take the piece. And Black played rook takes c4 check, which is a horrible blunder. And yeah, I can't, I can't repeat this uh, many times. Tactics, chess is complicated but sometimes we just make it more complicated than it should be. Sometimes we have a simple recapture or a simple, you know, get piece out of the attack thing. And instead we go for complicated things and we're just shooting on our own foot because here Black um, did this check. I mean, if, if you really want to consider this move, which is, of course, a move you should consider because it's an intermediate move and let's say if White plays King B1, then we can take the Knight then we're fine, because we're, we're better than in the other line, of course. But white has two legal moves. So at the very least, you should consider the other legal move, rook c2. And, and now this rook is on the c-file. That makes a huge difference, because uh, let's remember, we're forced to take our piece back, otherwise we're a piece down. And now that's what actually happened in the game, rook c2, rook takes g4, pawn takes b7, and now this is a big difference with the rook on c2, right? Because now after rook b8, rook takes c7, it, this, this would have been a good moment to resign. The game went on, but, you know, rook c8 check is coming. There's no real way to stop it, um, unless you try to, to block it. I mean, you can't stop the check, but you can try to block it. But the other rook is also coming. So, I mean... In the game e2 was tried, but let's say you go rook e2, uh, sorry, rook e4 to meet this check with, you know, you don't want white to, to get a queen, so you play rook e4 to play rook e8. Well, um, here they can just trade rooks here, play rook d7, you're completely tied up, and this king is controlling this pawn, and even worse, white has a very simple threat of rook c7 rook c8 and get a queen. So, um, I mean, the only thing you can try is to push the h pawn, right? To have, let's say, after rook c7, king h7. So rook c8 now hangs the pawn on b7. But the end game is completely hopeless. White is completely winning here. That pawn is never uh, going away. It, yeah, this is over. So, still that could have been the best try maybe rook e4 rook e8 but black tried e2 but again this is not uh, um yeah rook e1 rook c8 was already winning yeah i think it's it's not worth to to see the rest of the game because okay white eventually played rook c8 and won the game easily but yeah that was the key moment where um they attack a piece and you start complicating yourself in a position where arguably you were the one with the advantage because you were a pawn up. 
why people get so complicated you know why why do people tend have this tendency to 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 complicate things when they're when they have an advantage worst thing that can happen i mean you go away worst thing that can happen is you you end up losing the pony three clean and you lose your advantage worst thing that, that can happen is you lose your advantage but when you enter complications, the worst thing that can happen is you miss a move like rook c2 and then you're lost, completely and utterly lost because you were, you were already doing a concession there with pawn takes c6, pawn takes b7. Okay, so that happened and I hope this was an instructive example. Let's move on to another game. This was IPR against uh, F Zaba and uh, we have this position yeah and i bring a couple of positions uh with, with the same topic of one side having the advantage and and losing <laughs> so you know giving away not just the advantage but giving giving everything away so this position this is actually a very messy position so it's it's not so simple and i don't uh pretend to say it's simple but um Black played a bit careless here. It's it's black to move and black has an advantage. I don't want to say a big advantage even though the engine says uh, minus four. So the engine says this is a big advantage. I think the position is still complicated. Black is an exchange up, clearly. And also the number of pawns is equal but it seems like black is a pawn up somehow. Like if you look at the position, it, it, pawns are equal but yeah, it feels like black is an exchange up, but also also having something else. This pawn is really dangerous. So it's it should be in the end game. Um, also, black's pieces are not so bad. This queen is pretty active here, and doing a good job at defending some some points as well. This rook is pretty active. This rook is 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 very you know solidly stick into e6, blocking e5, defended and defending some weaknesses, controlling some important squares, blah blah blah. But uh, but tactics are happening. White just played rook d5. I can't remember where the rook came from, but let's say from d1. The rook somehow came here, and White has a simple threat: rook takes e5, check, winning the queen. So. This was not a one-move blunder, okay? This is not that black just missed the threat and, uh, and hung the queen. That's not what happened. What happened was a series of mistakes in a row uh, that I, I would say unfortunate because black had several, several ways here to, to defend and didn't manage to. If there's something to hope for as white is, you know, due to to black's king being exposed. Now the good news for black is a lot of pieces, let's say all of the pieces, are helping defend that king. So they're around the king and it should be possible to, to, to defend. Also this knight is not helping the attack, right? This knight on b1 is a good defender preventing some checks, but it's, it's, it's not helping uh, white's attack yet. It may, but not yet. And uh, actually, <clears throat> that knight could be in trouble if black could afford to play a move such as uh, queen a1, which, again, uh, you can't right now because c5 is hanging. But, yeah, this is not the best knight ever, but we can envision that that knight, that knight may jump to, to c3 or a3, sometimes even to, to d2, or, although right now jumping to d2 is, is, is would be losing because of queen a1, but okay, the knight will try to... To get into play but for now black needs to address this this threat now there were several ways to address the threat and uh, for example simple moves that defend the pawn because there's already one defender so you could defend it with king c6 you could defend it with rook c6 you could defend it with uh, rook b5 and that's pretty much it right <laughs> those are like the well and king b6 but king b6 seems uh, rather uh, silly because if you go king b6, you're blocking stuff, you're pinning the pawn in a, in a different line. And if, if, the, if the idea is to play king b6 to play rook c6, you can play rook c6 in one go. So, okay. So rook c6, king c6, and rook b5 would be my candidate moves. 
And of course, if I don't like them for some reason, I will start thinking of moves such as, okay, let's give the pawn back, but have my king safe. For instance, moves like king b7, try to get the king somewhere safe, or, uh, well, if we don't move the king, we have to move the queen, because rook takes right now wins the queen. So, for example, another move maybe would be queen b4, like an attacking move. Queen b4, threatening all sorts of, of things there, allowing either rook takes e5 check, and then we have um, maybe a plan to run the king to safety, or, of course, we're not scared of queen takes because we would just trade queens. So, yeah, I would consider moves like that. Rook uh, c6, king c6, rook b5, queen b4, queen b king b7. And actually, the player played one of those moves, like the worst one of those moves. Because all of them are fine, except rook b5. Rook b5 has a huge problem, and rook b5 was played. So probably the player missed white's idea, but I think white's idea was more or less easy to foresee, because we actually already talked about this. Uh, is he wants the knight in, so he will bring the knight now, knight c3 or knight e3. And, and that is a problem for that rook. So, so rook b5, great inaccuracy. And the engine already, uh, already thinks that the position is equal now, which is bad news for black, <laughs> because black is up material. And uh, yeah, white actually did it the, the, the stronger way, which is knight, knight a3, because knight c3, um, you know, would allow checks on a3 or a1, and you need to calculate and be safe, but knight a3 is very strong. It, it allows no check at all, and it's attacking the rook. If the rook moves, then c5 hangs. So this is a good moment. <laughs> To be extra safe as black and black did a good move here uh king c6 okay let's just give the exchange back but at least have everything defended so the king comes to defend here so after knight takes you can play queen takes which is actually what happened in the game but now we're in this position where again um by the way there was a trick there well a trick the king see the king attacking the rook so king c6, the king attacks the rook, which is nice. But after knight takes, you have to take the knight. So the trick is if you take the, the rook, there's checkmating one. So yeah, that would so so it was nice of, of white to find knight takes b5, and it was nice of black to see that he had to take the knight back. But we're in this position where the exchange um, went away, the exchange advantage went away. So now the position is equal from a material standpoint. I still believe uh, black has some uh, chances to play for a wing at some point, but right now black needs to be really careful with his king because right now this king is in a bit of trouble. Good news is we're winning a tempo there, so white has to do something about it. Okay, white did something about it, played rook d3, which is a normal move. And here comes the final the final mistake slash blunder. I think black was completely not alert here uh, of the danger this king is in. The king is really exposed and there are major pieces on the board. Uh, arguably, these two pieces are attacking that king. This rook here, which can also come to b3, can also come to c3 if necessary to attack. This queen can come here, uh, maybe double with the rook. So I think both pieces are arguably attacking that king. Uh, conversely, black's pieces are not attacking white's king. Even though that, that king on c1 is not the safest king ever, uh, this queen went away from the a-file, so there are no checks right now. Of course, the queen is like two moves away to you know create some checking possibilities, but the rook is definitely not helping. So, uh, the good news for black is these two pieces help defending the king. So, this should be around equal, I suppose, but, but black didn't understand that he's the one under attack here and played a very, very bad move, misplacing his queen, he played queen b8, 
misplacing the queen completely. That's not the way the queen will help defending squares around the king. And with the simple idea, I imagine, to attack e5. So, so he, he completely... Yeah, I think this is uh, like when you're not alert of what the position is telling you. And, and to me, it was telling me that this king may be in danger. And yeah, misplacing the queen like that, it's actually the final mistake, which, by the way, let's enjoy now. White took care of like very well. White really punished this mistake in good fashion. Because here, if you don't punish it, maybe nothing happens and we're back to an equalish position. But uh, White played very well here. Queen e4 check now, and uh, you know with the queen on b5, this king will just move away. Uh, well, actually not there, but <laughs> let's go back to this position. Let's play a silly move. If if queen e4 check happens here, uh, the king cannot go to the b file because of rook b3. Remember the rook can go to b3, so we would have to go king, king c7 and and play there. Now the difference between here and the queen on b8. The queen on b8 is horrible. It's not defending c5. It's it's it, yeah. So it, it's really bad on b8, especially after king c7. It would be it would have even no purpose at all. So even comparing lines, even though h5 is a horrible move, it's like the worst move that I could think of. Uh, queen b8 is even worse because yeah, queen e4 check. You have to go king c7 again. If you go to the to the b file, you lose your queen, and after king c7, it's very obvious that the queen is doing nothing on, on that square on, on on b8. And now, remember, this is undefended because we played queen b8. Now white found the best and strongest move, queen to d5, threatening that pawn, but also doubling rook and queen with huge threats here. Like the main threat, the most obvious threat I can think of is queen d7 check, Rook b3 check, rook takes queen. Also, queen takes c5 check, and if the king moves to the b file, rook b3 check, rook takes queen. And also, queen takes c5 check, and if rook c6, probably queen e7 check, when then either you go to b6 and you lose the queen again, or you go to c8 and queen d7 is made. So, or rook d8 is made as well. Yeah, so checkmate threats threats to win the queen, all of that because of this misplacement of the queen to b8. It's um, it's sad for black uh, because he had a good position uh, like two moves ago. And <coughs> anyway, congrats to white for finding these moves. Queen e4 check, queen d5, very strong. And now queen b5 was tried. Um, and now white found again the best move, queen d8 check. Uh, yeah, if the king goes to the b file, rook b3, and if king c6, which happened in the game, queen c8 check, very nice, forcing the king into the b file. Uh, queen d7 was also working, anything really works here. Um, but queen c8, very nice, rook b3, winning the queen, queen takes b3, and now pawn takes wins, but he played this intermediate move, queen b8 check. And now uh, I'm going to show the finish because I like what white did here, um, which is a, objectively not the best move, <laughs> but, but it was a nice, it was a nice move, queen c8. Um, so yeah, the best move according to, to Stockfish are, we have a bunch of moves here. The ones I would play, king c2, king d2, you know, bring the king, try to trap the king. Those are in the top uh, engines uh, list, but also g4 or queen c7. But queen c8, okay, not as precise, but it set up a very nice checkmate that happened, so, so kudos to that. It's attacking this pawn, it's undefending e5. So black took on e5 and queen d7 mate. Very beautiful mate. Okay, so good job, IPR, punishing F Zappa there. Let's move on to the next example. Uh, another example uh, of a tactical mistake in a position that arguably uh, you're the one playing for the wing, right? White here probably doesn't have enough to win, 
because it's an exchange app for a pawn and and black has a fortress like position because you know with 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 that light square bishop that light square bishop can defend f7 which is like the only weakness and also these pawns are already blocked can't can't move without being lost so white probably can't win here but but white has the advantage right white has the the the, the extra exchange the exchange app um However, black won. These positions, yeah, I feel like when you're an exchange up, but your opponent has a fortress, it's actually really uncomfortable because uh, from, from an objective point of view, you're the one that can win and only you. But from a practical point of view, uh, if, you, if, you're not, if you're not accurate, you can actually lose. And that's what happened in this game. So... Yeah, tricky. Anyway, in this case, it was just a tactical mistake. But sometimes it's it's uh, it's a thing of you know you're trying to win, you're trying to win, you're trying to win, and then you start making mistakes because you're you're so tired, and your opponent has an easy fortress, and you try too hard, and sometimes by trying to win you you lose. Uh, in this case, it was just a one move mistake, which is right now, um, and it's funny because. White has two legal moves. One of them loses and the other not. So, yeah, white can play either king d4 or rook d5. And I assume white... Maybe black, when black did this check, maybe he saw already the trick. I think that was the case because then after, after white's move, he played instantly. So I think he saw already the trick. And it's about lining up pieces one problem <coughs> one problem in chess is when you see a signal signal uh, you mean like something in the position that tells you there might be a tactic like pieces that are aligned uh, the problem is sometimes the signal is not there until you make the move and then it's too late right because here if we think about pieces that are lined up these two are lined up but Black black has no dark square bishop, so so no problem. They're they're lined up also in the uh, in this special line up that's the the knight forking shape. So but but black has no knight. So so this line up is not so dangerous. It looks like or no not not yeah not uh, easy to exploit. However, after rook d5, which was played in the game. Look at these rooks lined up in a diagonal of the color of black's bishop. Oopsie daisy. And white, sorry, black won easily after rook takes d5. King takes d5 and bishop check. Yeah, the game continued for some moves, but obviously black is completely winning after this. So, yeah, again, the problem is... The problem with signals is they're not there, they're not in front of your eyes until you play the move. After you play the move, then then they're there, and then it's too late. So that's why this this advice that is given to, to beginners so many times, before you make your move, think about it for a minute. <laughs> what can be wrong about that move? What can be wrong about rook d5? You're lining up pieces on this diagonal. Yeah. And of course, after king d4, the game would have been uh, equal. Let's move on to another example. This is from game Kramopolis versus uh, Brainet. Brainet. I don't know if I'm spelling it correctly. Um, yeah. So uh, this is interesting because <coughs> this position occurred in the database, master's database four times sorry yeah four times three times three times two of them black played a normal looking move queen a6 although the engine is not impressed with that move uh, the engine thinks here you have to play bishop a6 well last move for white was knight of d2 attacking this bishop on, on c4 so black needs to do something about this bishop the pawn on d5 is completely defended so 
the bishop really needs to go away or be defended. That's why queen a6 or bishop a6 are, are normal moves. Bishop a6 and b5, bishop b5 are the preferred options of the engine, and queen a6 is the move that has been tried uh, in master's level uh, a couple times that also has one win for white, one win for black, so anything can happen. It attacks it too. It's uh, according to the engine, it's not a very impressive move. The engine likes uh, white after that. But okay, it would be a normal move. However, Black decided to blunder a piece here, but it's funny in the database there's one game uh, with that move as well. And and Black played Bishop takes a2 here, which is a pawn that looks hanging, right? We're attacking it twice, and it's defended only once. The problem is, again, think what could be the problem with your move. Uh, in this case, after bishop takes a2, to me the signal is clear that piece has no squares. <laughs> so that piece may get dropped. And it actually happened in the game. So bishop takes a2, which by the way forces rook a1. So, so there's no way here you can get confused about, oh, my opponent had so many options. No, your opponent is going to play rook a1. It's the only move, for sure. <laughs> and, and you may have thought... It was an advantage to take the pawn with tempo because after rook a1 then you can do something about your trapped piece except you can't do anything about your trapped piece. Your piece is trapped. This piece is uh, on a2. It's attacked twice now because you forced rook a1. It's defended once. No way to defend it yet another time because you can't go with the queen in front of your rook to defend that bishop. And all the squares where the bishop can go are under control. d5 is controlled twice, b3 is controlled twice, and c4 only needs to be controlled once because no, no other black piece helps in that square. So basically this bishop is lost. And again, it's not a very hard calculation because you're actually forcing your opponent to play rook a1, right? Okay, so that happened in the game. Bishop takes a2, rook a1, and, uh, and he tried bishop b3, which, okay, it, it attacks the queen and the rook, but of course knight takes defense both. And the game continued, but white uh, was a piece up and ended up winning the game. It looked like a very simple tactic. I'm surprised in master's level uh, that happened once as well. Bishop takes a2. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you're forcing your opponent to, to trap your piece. So... Funny. Anyway, uh, let's move on to Flippy Flappy versus Sep32. <clears throat> Another case where one side has the advantage and ends up losing. But again, uh, we have a case of exposed king. So, um, so for example, here, uh, black has the advantage. Right? Oops, sorry, one sec. So black has the advantage because black is up a lot of material, right? Black is up a pawn and a knight, like a full piece and a pawn up. The only thing, the only thing that black should be worried about is the exposed king. White is attacking with only two pieces, but it's, it's trying to get the most out of it. Queen takes h7 is a threat, rook takes b7 is another threat. And definitely black needs to be a bit careful on how to defend this. You can't play just any random move, but many moves work here because the advantage is so big that the only thing you need to do is try to not get checkmated. Most of black's pieces are well defended. Most of them are well defended. The knight is defended a million times. The rooks defend each other. Even the queen is defended by the knight. So if only these weaknesses here that are undefended and the king itself. So the king, the, the major priority for black should be to not get checkmated. We need to be careful also with uh, the other rook coming to, to attack us. But c1 is covered. So maybe rook b1 is more dangerous than rook c1. We need to be a bit careful with... a couple things, but there should be many, many, many ways for black not to lose this game. 
and yet black managed to lose it. Okay, so this first move was a bit inaccurate, king c7. It wasn't the best move um, for a number of reasons. Uh, I think, to my eyes, it would make sense to start defending things around the king instead of bringing the king to defend things, right? That's not like, you have an extra piece, you have more pieces. Just start defending your king with your pieces. So here, normal moves would have been, rook e7 is probably the one that I would think in the first place. Let's just uh, not let, let, let's avoid that queen from entering with a check. And yes, we're, we're, we're allowing rook takes b7 check, but then our king is going to be safe. No more checks. Feel free to trade rooks if you want. I'm a knight up. This is just, just nothing for white. Just, I can't, I can't even think how white continues here because maybe white needs to, to, to waste a move to not trade rooks or, or else, you know, this is going to get simplified to, a, to just a piece up endgame. Uh, so that would be option number one. Option number two, suggested by the engine, is knight d6. It's the other way around. It's we're going to defend b7 uh, and give up h7. But actually, if if you look at the position after rook e7, it may seem even even safer than than the other option because we're actually winning winning tempi back here, and this pawn on b7 may help our king be safer. And this knight is actually very good. Uh, defending there, it's ready to jump to c4 if we need to block like the c file. Okay, so that was another option. And there were other options, there were many, many moves here that work. Uh, rook a b8 works, um, rook a7 works. Like, you know, defend one of the pawns, give up the other. But king c7 played, and what black is trying with this move, it's funny. Because white wasn't, uh, uh, black wasn't uh, happy enough, and <laughs> a piece and a pawn up. He wanted to save all of the pawns, not caring about the king's safety at all. And again, instead of putting putting pieces around the king, you know, if you don't put pieces around the king, a queen and two rooks may checkmate you easily. So instead of putting uh, pieces around the king, he's He's going active with the king, king c7 attacking the rook. Therefore, there's no queen takes h7 now. So he's trying to save all of his pawns by winning this tempo on the rook so that then he can save this pawn h7. Now that has a problem, a um, very simple problem. What is the most natural defense to this rook on, on b6? Yeah, rook fb1, you got it. And now b7 is hanging with a check, and h7 still hanging with a check. So king c7 wasn't really uh, helping why, uh, black's position. If any, it was helping wh white's attack, because if we compare to the previous position, we have the same problems, b7 hanging with a check, h7 hanging with a check, except worse, <laughs> because now white has one more rook participating of the attack. Actually, rook takes b7 is a very serious threat now. So... Yeah, at this point, um, they were in time trouble, okay? So black had two minutes, white had a minute and a half. Uh, and that may explain the next move, because the next move, I think, makes no sense at all. <laughs> but it was already difficult. After king c7, you already need to find here um, the best way to defend. Now, in my eyes, the most natural move, the one I would do as black here, would have been rook a7, which is not ideal but it stops the threat and the engine doesn't like it the engine is not impressed but the point of rook a7 is we stop the obvious threats so that's probably the first move that would occur to me especially if i'm in time trouble i would play it because i stop rook b7 i mean i stop the threats on b7 and if they uh, they do the other one on on h7 i still have rook e7 and actually this position is very safe for black and actually uh, black is winning in this position. The problem here, the reason the engine doesn't like rook a7 is due to queen b3 exclamation mark putting more pressure on b7 and now after let's say knight d6 there's this sacrifice to then check and take on a7 and the position is around equal. 
but Black's King still needs to be a bit careful. Okay, so so that's why Rook A7 is not best. What was best here, but that's yeah, en like engine moves. So it was already complicated. Uh, what was best was Rook A B8, which yeah, it's not the move you want to play, of course. And another move that worked according to the engine was King D8. But again, it's not the, the most obvious. The idea is that Rook takes B7, uh, finally, White has no checks. White has great Rooks and great Queen, but no checks. So now we have time to, to, to create some counterplay with Rook C8. So that's, this is a funny computer line, but really not easy to find over the board. Uh, again, I, th I feel like over the board I would play Rook A7 because that's the threat. And I feel like black should be doing okay. The engine says it's equal, but I think... Um, and, and, and the engine also says that with rook ab8 or king d8, black is actually better. Which, yeah, okay, maybe not obvious. Um, anyway, again, king c7 was probably the one, the, the, mis the biggest mistake, I would say. Even though the engine says black is still fine after rook fb1, it's really hard to find this move now. And again, time travel is my own explanation for a move like rook a6. Uh, trying to trade rooks, yes. But hanging rook takes b7, yes. And white will not miss that. So rook takes b7 check happened. And uh, uh, yeah, king up. This is funny because king up is the rule, right? Ben Fangle will be proud. Always move the king up in the endgame, except if you're getting checkmated. Here, it, it, it was safer to move it back, but yeah, it, it was already a very difficult position. I just want to show um, how the game ended, but also another computer idea in this position, which is beautiful. Although, honestly, I think if I tell you that this position is mating 5, you may actually find it. So... Um, yeah, if you want to pause the video <laughs> and, and try to find the checkmate in 5 here for white because the king king went up, it's exposed. Uh, this is this is a funny a funny idea. Um, okay, so some of you may notice that if this rook wasn't on a6, rook, rook 1 to b6 would be checkmate. For that reason, <coughs> the shortest path to mate is the amazing queen a3. Which, if somebody plays queen a3 against you, you, you report these people. This, this is a computer move. If any, it's a puzzle move, only if I, if I give you the hint that this is a forced checkmate. As otherwise, yeah, queen a3 is a suspicious move for a human. Um, but it makes sense. We're trying to distract the rook. And also, this queen is, is, is really attacking here. It's threatening queen takes rook. And uh, let what does the rook do? <laughs> a funny line, for instance, is if you if you defend the rook, queen a4 check, bam. Who would have thought? Queen a4 check is made next move. Because if you take rook b6, if you don't take, there's only king d6, queen d7 mate. So, yeah, that's funny. And, of course, the best computer line here is queen c1, which is the only one that, you know, makes the longest mate. But, okay, that, that's funny, but uh, why did, I think, what, what a human should do in this position is to keep, to keep checkmating this, this guy without this, this crazy, these crazy things. Now, probably my choice would have been queen b3 because it seems really, really strong. Queen b3 seems that strong that I don't see, I don't see how, uh, how black doesn't resign immediately after that move. But he went queen takes h7 which is apparently not precise because it's threatening queen d7 and queen c7 so it's basically forcing black's move queen d8 good job defending and now white still well white still you know look at that king but uh, but there's no clear no clear win and actually queen takes uh, oh sorry i thought queen takes g6 happened after rook c1 check good move king uh, d6 queen takes um, g6 black could have survived here surprisingly so that's why queen takes h7 was wasn't uh, accurate but honestly 
at this point, white is going to win always in, in human play. So I don't want to criticize these moves. I, I just find find it funny to see the the what the computer suggests. But uh, of course, queen takes h7 is a good move, and this sequence is good, and it's strong enough to make black uh, uh, collapse as, as he did in the game. But yeah, queen b3 was much simpler, attacking there. The rook can never defend that because of queen b6 mate, and it's actually there's actually no good way to stop this. Queen b5 check followed by queen d7 mate is a threat. If you try to defend uh, the d8 square, then we do the checkmate on on the a6 square. It's funny. And uh, yeah, so queen b3 was much stronger. But queen takes x7, it's very funny. Uh, Black found this move. Black found this on uh, this move, king d6, because yeah, what else? And here after queen takes g6, <coughs> black has like three options: rook e6, knight f6, or queen f6. And two of them hang mate in three. And the other one continues the game for a while. And he didn't find it, unfortunately, for him. So he played knight f6, which loses immediately. And apparently, with rook e6, he could have could have held the game for a while. Um, so after knight f6, queen takes f5. This is how the game ended. Queen c8. Last trick, last resource. Trying to checkmate on e1. That was a funny move. But it allows mating too. And white saw. So this is how the game ended. Okay, beautiful checkmate. Nice, nice job, flippy flappy. But what was funny is if you play rook e6 and white takes on a five, which is what it looks like white wanted to do, he did in the game. Then after queen f6, the game is equal because remember, <laughs> black is a piece up, and now if you don't trade, if you don't accept trading queens. Uh, black is the one with, with, with actual counterplay, and it's funny how white has no more checks. This rook is doing a good job defending. So, so yeah, this, this would have been funny. Um, and of course the computer says, no, 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 instead of taking on a 5, queen g7, and white still has the advantage, computer stuff. Yeah, but in the game, knight f6, and after queen takes, yeah, it was very difficult, so we saw this endgame. But, this finish. Uh, but finally, instead of queen takes f5, white has a checkmate in 3. Again, pause the video and find the checkmate in 3. This is easier than the other. This is this is much easier. You're going to find this one. So mate in 3, the first move you should look for are checks. So yeah, queen g3 check. <clears throat> Pretty much the same finish as in the game after king e6, queen e5. So the only reason it's mate in 3 and not in 2 is because there's this f4 here. And yeah, okay, so interesting, but uh, importantly, from a piece up position, this king c7, wrong move. When you have more pieces than your opponent, find the solid way to solve your problems. In this case, the problem is king safety, bring pieces around the king, give a pawn if you need, don't try to hold everything with tactics and especially not with an active king. Active king is not what you should be looking for if your main problem is exposed king. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's move on. I have two more uh, positions. This is uh, Cinderquill versus Lion88. Um, I can't remember this one. Oh yeah, I remember this one now. It's a very simple tactical uh, mistake. And again, with the same concept of there's no signal until you make your move. So, in this position, white is, white has a very pleasant position, let's be honest. White has, if I count correctly, white is a pawn up, um, because white has all the eight pawns, and black's missing one. But black has some, uh, you know, black can argue that white's pawn structure is not ideal, that uh, they have the bishop pair, so definitely some chances to, to have a game here. But black played a very suspicious move here, not h5. And, and that's the thing. In this position, it seems like 
I don't see a clear threat from White's part. White is not threatening anything specially. But after knight h5, knight h5 is threatening to, to, to remove that bishop, I suppose, or maybe stick the knight on f4. I don't know what's uh, Black's plan. But anyway, knight h5 introduces a new signal in the in the position, some 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 piece alignment, and uh, and it's funny. It wasn't there before, but after you make the move, it is there. And what's what's worse when you make that kind of mistake? Your opponent will see it because it's just the piece you just moved. <laughs> so the opponent will not miss that your knight is on h5. It's like if if you show this position to like uh, randomly to some person, I give you this position starting here, and I and I tell you um, how does white win? Maybe I, I guess you will find it, but maybe it takes you a few more seconds than if I give you this position and I tell you black blunder here with knight h5 because yeah that's it when you see a new position a fresh position you're trying to examine the whole board and see what's important what's relevant but when you're playing a game you just saw your opponent's last move and that's that's what's different from what it was the position before so that's what you usually focus on and yeah this knight is aligned with her queen and that combines with other uh, signals on the position, of course, this f7 pawn and defended. I guess a lot of things happen in this game. I don't, I didn't bring the the previous moves, but you can guess that this rook moved out of defending f7, this king moved out of defending f7, and walking into a knight fork. Yeah, so it looks like black set up all the problems and then ended up playing knight h5 just to make white's tactics hell, uh, work and of course white found knight e5 here attacking both the knight and knight takes f7 check winning the queen so there's no time to take on g3 knight takes g3 we lose the queen and and yet that's probably black's best move yeah, the alternative is to just lose the piece and have an exposed king and be under attack, which is what happened in the game. Queen a5. Oh, <laughs> yeah, queen a5 was a nice try. Because you now if we take this piece, this queen can take this, this piece. So that was actually a nice try, tactically speaking. Uh, if we think about the material, the problem is we're getting attacked, we're getting destroyed, and that's how the game continued. Queen takes h5, queen takes e2... Queen takes f7. Notice there's a knight g6, knight g6 checkmate threat. So rook g8. White. Uh, this is this is something I liked about white here. White didn't uh, didn't go for complications here. I think, and play knight g6. Which maybe maybe he played it too fast. If you look at the clocks, he, he spent only seconds to play knight g6, which already wins material. So he probably saw that move, so that he was winning material and was happy with that. Of course, there's a move that wins more material, which I guess White missed. Queen takes bishop, but but yeah, at least he didn't go trying to you know be clever about winning material uh, or be clever about trying to checkmate uh, uh, Black. Just went to win all the material he could. And then this beautiful bishop e5 check, 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 and yeah, just keeping the initiative, grabbing everything he can. And then well, e5, e5 is funny because it's the best move according to the engine, but it wouldn't be my move. <laughs> like, you know, this bishop has no future now after e5, okay, there might be some counterplay, but actually um, he spent four minutes on the move, so... So it has my approval because if it's the best move and he thought for a while then he, he might have seen what, what the move uh, brings and I think what it brings is a big, 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 big queen f6 threat that leads to checkmate. So queen f4 stopping that, queen g6 and yeah, the game continued for a while. He forced the queen trade and an exchange up he ended up converting, and I don't think we have to go there. It was more or less smooth. No more blunders in this game. 
Oh, finally converted to this uh, to this endgame where White has two outsider pass pawns. It's a, an obvious win, uh, which is nice to see. You can you can tell these are uh, um, good players big, um, from the first boards because in the lower boards you will never see this kind of move. Rook takes e6. Objectively speaking, the engine will have like 10 moves that are better <laughs> better than rook takes e6, but this is like the easy human way of converting because it's a wing. Yeah. And g3. And probably here g3 immediately already wins. Okay, let's see the final position that I wanted to share with you. Artyan, 12 versus Vic Perez, Vic Pez, sorry. And oh, the, the, this is the most interesting one. This is the end game. A particularly interesting end game that I've talked about many times um, with some of my students. We have opposite color bishops and heavy pieces, right? Opposite color bishops and heavy pieces, queen and rook in this case. So, if there's one thing to remember about these kind of positions is activity. Activity and initiative, you have to be active, you have to be attacking. If you're defending, you're going to be in trouble because the side who attacks here is, is more or less attacking with one extra piece. If we manage, let's, let's imagine it from White's perspective, if we manage to attack on the dark squares, let's say we manage to target g7, or we manage to target this, this squares <clears throat> these dark squares around the king we will be attacking with one extra piece because the queen may help defending the rook may help defending but this bishop will never defend a dark square and conversely if black manages to attack us on the light squares for instance these weaknesses we have here or the f3 pawn we may have a problem we, because we, we, we will not be able to defend those squares with our dark square so these positions you have to, it's like a balance between finding our activity and fighting against our opponent's activity. For instance, how does black target f3? Well, black may be interested, maybe, in the pawn break f5 to, to open the f-file, to maybe get rid of the e4 pawn, and that way be, being able to coordinate an attack on f3. The problem is, if, if black does that, suddenly black's dark squares is, are going to be weak as well. Not just the g5 square, but also g7 will be more accessible and e5 will be undefended. So it's tough for either side. These positions, you usually need to be patient and build up your attack slowly. And, and it's tough, you know, to, to make a big decision like a pawn break without giving your opponent uh, some chances. So here, I would imagine the position is equal, but both sides should be trying to, to, to do that, to go for some activity. For instance, I think like uh, it's wide to move here. Um, maybe you can put your king closer to your staff, or you can try, I don't know, rook d1, uh, maybe even queen d1, because then there's less chances to get checkmated, and maybe you can be more brave about your pawn breaks. So, I don't know, maybe there are a couple ideas here, or actually many ideas that, that could be interesting. Queen c4 looks also like a very um, active move, because you're attacking, uh, you're putting pressure to black's pieces in a way that they cannot move easily. So, yeah, many, many, many moves <coughs> could be interesting. I, I'm, I'm considering even, I, I think queen a6 is playable, because bishop takes, loses the bishop to queen c8, so... Yeah, you can come up with some ideas, um, but what white does in this moment is so, so, so risky that it's funny <laughs> that white got punished, because it's very instructive. So what white played here was f4, and f4 is a move that the engine um, is not particularly critical of this move, like here it's minus 0 0.2, here is it's minus 0 0.8 actually if only if king g8 otherwise it's minus 0 0.6 
So it's not a big difference. It is a difference, but not a big one from, from the engine's point of view. But from a human's point of view, I see this move, F4, and I, I think white is going suicidal here. <laughs> because that weakens... That, so to speak, I mean, to, to put it that way, it, it finishes <laughs> weakening all the light squares. Um, they were already a bit weak here around the king. That's one good thing about black's structure is it's uh, it's strong on the dark squares. Uh, this structure is not strong on the light squares. So in a way, this king was already more exposed than black's. Although arguably this this structure here is holding the bishop very well, but now after f4 is not holding the bishop very well anymore, and e4 is a target. But also all these squares around here are now. Easy, uh, easy targets to maneuver Black's bishop to them and start attacking uh, this king on g1. So, so yeah, the reason why, even if, even if the engine says, now this is fine, I can hold this as white, this is only minus 0 0.8, I think this is like the critical mistake and the reason why white lost the game, as, we're, as we will witness, is you're making your life so difficult now for you while by playing a four while as we will see black will keep the structure so this bishop can never target never ever target the king or even g7 so after a four well the idea of a four of course is to unleash an attack here queen takes h5 but that's just one check you capture a pawn yes just one check and that's it the bishop and the rook they're not helping to the attack so so, okay, black took, check, king g8. And now, <clears throat> e4 is hanging, if we take on f4. Um, so, white said, hey, rook d1, I'm, I'm going to use the activity, finally. Okay, if the queen moves uh, far away, maybe rook d8 is a problem, so the queen needs to keep an eye on d8. Uh, of course, there's rook d6 also, which I think would, would have been pleasant for black as well, but black decided to keep the material, which is also interesting if you want to attack. It's, if the other option was pleasant, I think this is even more than pleasant, because, uh, again, light squares here. Oof. I can't draw... Uh, there you are. Um, so queen e7, now uh, white needs to recapture on, on f4. He played bishop takes, which I think is the human, natural way. The engine likes to take with the pawn, which uh, it's ugly. Anyway, bishop takes, and rook takes, and now we have this position. Look at this naked king, look at this diagonal. The queen can come to the other diagonal, the, 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 the other color diagonal, and this rook is helping. Rook e1 may actually be a threat of sorts and look at this king safe on g8 white has no checks because this pawn structure on dark squares is keeping this bishop away from from attacking while the other pieces control the light squares so that's why in this kind of uh, endgame you also want to have a good bishop compared to your pawns because your bishop can control the light squares if necessary Look at this bad bishop. This bishop can never control these square, this, this weak squares around the king. So, yeah. And king f2. Yeah, king f2 was played out of uh, already trying to solve a problem that's, <laughs> that's uh, really difficult to solve. So if, if black plays rook e1 check and we take, queen takes e1 is checkmate. That seems like a problem. There's another problem in this position, which is queen a7 check. Queen a7 check, I don't see a good answer to that. Because, yeah, you, you don't want to walk into this cover check, so after queen a7 check you will have to play king f1. Then there's, there's queen a6 check, but that's... that's Actually, let's show that line. Can I show that line? I, I would need to do a null move as white. Which is tough to do. So I guess we'll see it just on the in the game what happened and what could have happened. 
because queen f7 is another big threat. And actually, here the engine says, no, white is fine, minus 0 0.3, white is fine, but the way to survive is so difficult because, you, you know, they're shooting at you on every direction. So, yeah, that's what f4 cost, and I can't insist enough because we're in move 43. In move 40, three moves ago, F4 happened, and to me it was suicide. And for the engine it's not, because the engine says, oh, I can defend this position. I think no human can defend this position. You're being shot in every direction, and it's so hard to find the right move. The right move here, according to the engine, is either King F1 or, finally, Queen A5. It's also funny that rookie one check is not a big deal, by the way. <clears throat> Although the moves, uh, the best moves according to the engine prevent that move, prevent rookie one. What is important about them is they prevent queen a7 check, because that's the big threat. But it's very hard to understand that with, with seconds on the clock, or even with time on the clock. This position is really hard to, to find the best defense uh, for a human. So... Yeah, again, f4 to me is the mistake, not this. This, that happens. King f2 is a blunder, but it was tough. Again, what I was saying is rookie 1 is not a big threat, not as big as queen a7, because the rook is defended, so you don't need to take it. If they play rookie 1 check, you play king f2, and finally, king f2, you're safe. <laughs> because you have e3 covered, you have e2 covered, there are no more checks. That's funny. And you're attacking the rook. So actually that's funny. What's not safe is queen a7. So that's why here the engine plays either queen a5 or king f1. Now after king f2, that allows queen a7 check, and therefore it loses on the spot. Queen a7 check was played in the game. King f1 only move, because otherwise you walk into a discover check that wins your queen at least. So king f1 only move. And here black <coughs> didn't find the winning blow and played queen back to e7 instead because it was there, right? Yeah, it was on e7. So I'm puzzled that after queen e7, uh, white didn't repeat with king f2. White went for something else here. This would be an automatic for me, especially if I'm in time trouble. I would play just king f2 and tell black, okay, find a way to win here because you didn't find it, you're repeating. Instead, white played queen f5 here, which Kind, kind of amazes me. Anyway, I'll go back to this queen a7 and I'll show the winning line, but first let's see how the, the, the game finished, because uh, position is still horrible for white, even, even if the engine says it can be held. So rook b1, now the bishop is coming to another diagonal, queen check, h7, Unnecessary, bishop e6 was possible because queen takes, hangs the queen. Okay, king g1, allowing rook e1, that's bad news. So he went king f1 to prevent rook e1 and now he allowed it, so okay. I guess h4 here, I don't know. So the check happened, king g2, queen e2, good move, king g1, now bishop h3. And... And I can't stress this enough, how bad f4 was. <laughs> Look at this position. Make a picture of this position. White resigns here, because there's no way to stop the checkmate that's incoming on the, on the, on the light squares. This queen has no moves to defend both squares. And even if magically the queen could, could, could come to f2 in one move, then queen d1 wins. Because again, the light squares, you can only defend them with the queen. The, the bishop can never help. Conversely, black's structure makes this bishop stupid. The bishop can't attack anything there. If the pawn f6 was gone, yeah, the bishop could coordinate against g7. But with this structure, this bishop is not attacking. And you're only attacking with the queen on the light squares, thanks to this, this structure. And the queen is trying to attack on the light squares, but... Black has so many pieces that control the light squares that he's completely safe defending with more pieces than white is attacking. In this case, uh, also has the checks or you know the important squares under control, so there's actually no 
not even a check for white. And that's why white resigned here. So take a picture of this position, take a picture of the first position when f4 was played, and understand this concept because I see so many, so many players uh, failing into this, and I'm glad that black uh, punished uh, white in this in this fashion because yeah, this position black just traded rooks went into a completely equal from a material standpoint uh, end game of opposite color bishops and queens where white actually has to resign because there's no salvation very very good job big best and let me just briefly to finish go back to this position because it was funny um, uh, the way to finish here after king f1 instead of going back to e7 and the reason why queen a7 check had to be avoided is that now there's a, a nice staircase pattern to have the queen with access to e6. It's important to have access to e6. And you can only understand that if you see the whole line. So queen a6 check. And this is a staircase pattern because thanks to these pieces here, this king has to go back to, you know, f2 or g1 and then back to f1 or, yeah. So... So you can check them as many times as you can. Let's say king f2, queen b6 check, king f1. And in this position, with the queen already with access to e6, now you check on b5 check. There were a couple of reasons you couldn't do it with the queen on a7. Uh, and one of them is the queen would take the bishop. So the queen on b6 is defending that. But also it's important to have access to e6, not e7. As we will see after, oops. Let's go back there, check, check, now check, and now there's only one move, that makes sense, is king g2. Uh, of course there are four legal moves here, <laughs> but we're not gonna, we're not gonna consider queen e2, we're not gonna consider rook d3, we're not gonna consider queen takes bishop, right? So king g2 only move. And and here with this bishop helping, we can play rookie to check. And now king f1 is risky due to queen f2 mate. King h1 allows a similar checkmate on this diagonal with bishop there and the queen controlling g1. And king f3 may be interesting. It allows rook f2 and the king has to go up and it's also exposed. You can uh, you, you can see how on g4 at least we win the queen and on e4 there, there, there should be a checkmate. I, I, would, I would even refrain from calculating more. So the critical move is king h3. And the fact that we have the queen with access to e6, that's it. To have, to have queen e6 against king h3, that was the key. So this is a funny line. If you calculate all of this... Uh, since the beginning, that would be awesome. And here, of course, there's only one move that makes sense for black, for white, sorry. Uh, because king h2 hangs rook takes h2, mate. And queen g4 hangs rook takes h2, winning the queen. So the only move that makes sense is g4. Uh, and now, the final move, the only winning move in this position, which is funny. Queen b3 check. I mean, it's funny, but it's um, not so hard to find. If king goes up, um, there's g5 check, which is funny. And if you block with the bishop, which is like the normal move, you take the rook. And all of that line, I mean, calculating all of that. So I don't think a human can see all this line with all these subtleties. And that's the reason why I don't see a human, especially in time trouble, can understand why queen a7 check is that strong of a threat compared to the threat rookie one which is really annoying the threat rookie one but it's funny how if you play a move that allows that let's say it's hard to find a move that allows that um, let's say we play h3 which is a bad move or h4 let's say um, what is funny again is that the killing idea here is queen a7 check because rook e1 check, if we take, we're checkmated. But if we go king f2, we're completely safe. So these things are really hard to understand 
in in a game and especially in time travel so in general i would prefer not to be under attack on so many directions because it's really hard for a human to to find all these subtleties that you can see with an engine and and even if your opponent doesn't play the right moves according to the engine you, you're still getting attacked and you're gonna get checkmated as happened in the game so again f4 big time big time i, I want to say big time mistake again the, the engine doesn't scream there but it's only because the engine can can defend with with surgical precision in those uh, in those situations where, where you're walking that fine line and in my eyes f4 is, is yeah big time mistake or at the very least a very 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 highly risky move that i would only consider if if the situation was very very desperate like a must win situation in the match and i can find other moves and even there even there i think you can only find uh, you can always find other moves this is like a suicidal move to me so yeah i wanted to share this example because i think it's very instructive again i think it's one of those cases where the engine only tells you half of the story and especially it tells you a part of the story that's not very human or you know <laughs> uh, i don't think anybody can defend with with such precision uh, so yeah, I hope this this uh, helps uh, uh, people. This I think this concept is is interesting. Anyway, I wanted to record for one hour. It's been one hour and sixteen minutes, so not so bad. I'll leave it here and have fun with your games. Have fun with your games. Sorry. Bye. See you next week.